Welcome, IMAP users. This is a tutorial on how to use the IMAP Survey123 form to record quick observations of invasive species on the go and submit them to IMAP invasives. So the way that this tool works is that when you're connected to the internet, you log into IMAP, you set up the Survey123, get the form, and then you can go out into the field, collect observations, save them to your device, and then when you get back home and have internet again, you can upload those observations to IMAP Invasives. And before I get started, I wanted to note that if you look in the description of this video, there are some timestamps that can uh, skip you to a different part of the tutorial. So for example, if you've already logged into IMAP and have your IMAP person ID, you can skip to step number two. The first step is going to be to log into IMAP Invasives and get your IMAP person ID. This is your unique identifier in IMAP Invasives, which you'll use to connect the records you submit in the Survey123 form to your account online. So what you're going to have to do first is open up a browser um, to access the internet. So I'm going to open up Chrome right on my tablet, and you go to imapinvasives.org, and there's a green login button at the top right. So you click that, and it brings you to our login portal. And so if you already have an account, you can put your username and password right there at the top and log in. If you don't have an account yet, you can sign up in the white box. Just put your, your name, email, create a password, and select your jurisdiction, which is the state or province where you expect to be collecting data the most. If you're creating an account right now, you hit that join button, and you'll see some instructions to how, on how to activate your account. Um, so make sure you follow those instructions. You'll get a, a message in your inbox um, that you, you just have to follow the activation link in that email to fully activate your account and be able to log in. So I already logged in in another tab, so I'm just going to switch over to that tab. So when you log into IMAP Invasives, the, the map will load. Um, you'll get a message with any recent updates. And there's a number of things going on in the map. Um, so at the top right, you can open the layers and toggle different layers on and off. And there's also tools you can use. Um, but this is all optional. And if you want to explore the database um, for reporting data using the Survey123, the only thing we need here online is to go into your account page from the main menu. So click the main menu on the top left, the little leaf icon. And then from there, um, select the Your Account page. And this brings you to your account page. Um, just has your basic information on here. And the only thing we need here is this person ID number in kind of the second box. So I'm going to copy that number. Um, and that's the, the code that I'll need in the Survey123 form. So that's all we need on IMAP Invasives Online. So I'm going to go back to my home screen. So step two is to install the Survey123 app onto your device. So open up the Play Store or the App Store if you're on an iOS device. But on my Android here, I'm going to go op open the Play Store and search Survey123. So the full name of the application that'll come up is ArcGIS Survey123 by Esri, and this is where you install the application. And even if you already have Survey123, I highly rec recommend going into the App Store on your device to make sure you're using the most current version. Um, but I already have the application on my device, so I'll just go back to the home screen and tap on the Survey123 app um, on the right. So that brings you to this screen, and you'll always want to click the Continue Without Signing In button. So you do not need to sign in with ArcGIS Online to use this app, um, particularly for the IMAP Survey123 form. So I'm just going to click the, the third option down, Continue Without Signing In. And so this brings you to this sort of blank looking page, um, no surveys installed yet. So now we're getting to the point where we will download the IMAP form. So for step three to download the IMAP form, one option is to go back into your browser and type in the link on the screen. But a quicker way to do it is to stay right in here in Survey123, 
and click the little QR code button on the top right in the search bar. So click that QR code button and I'm going to go to the QR code. Either way you get here, it will bring you to this page and there is an opportunity to download ArcGIS Survey123 if you haven't already, but most of us probably have this downloaded at this point. So the link, the button we actually want to click is the open the survey button at the bottom. So click that green button at the bottom of the screen. And so then it opens right up into the IMAP Survey123 form and you are good to go. And that was actually a one-time setup, so you won't have to go through the whole download process every single time. Um, it'll just be in your Survey123 app as one of your saved surveys. And just to show you that, I'll quit out of Survey123, go back in. Remember to always click the Continue Without Signing In button. And then the IMAP and Basis form is right there. Step four is to set up favorite answers. So I'm going to open up the form again and click collect. So you'll notice that the first several fields in the form are sort of your basic information, like your person ID, your name, the state or province that you're going to be collecting data in. And so these are probably fields that are going to be the same for all of the records you report. And you probably don't want to have to write those out every single time you create a record. So luckily, Survey123 has this favorites feature where you can set some answers as favorites and paste them in for all of your subsequent surveys. So to do this, first you have to go through and fill out those responses. So I'll go through that now. Do I have an IMAP account and know my person ID? Yes, because we just went over that. So I'll type in my person ID. I'll type in my name, and you'll notice that a little pop-up appeared with an abbreviation of the name connected to my person ID. And so I can see that I've typed in my person ID correctly because an abbreviation of my name pops up. For those of you who have just created your account, you might not be in our lookup system yet, so nothing will pop up there. But as long as you just type in your person ID carefully, you should be fine. Type in my email. And also, so since I just filled out a field that required me to type, my keyboard is now um, covering up half of my screen. If I want to put that away um, on Android, on my Android device, I have a back button at the, at the bottom of my screen that lets me do that. Um, if you're on iOS, the way to do it is to tap your finger above the keyboard and slowly scroll it down to sort of push it off the screen. So the next fields are organization and project ID. These can usually be left blank for most records. So organization ID would be if you are doing invasive species work as a part of your job, you could join your employer's organization and put that information there. But for most records and for all volunteers, you can leave organization ID blank. For project ID, um, that can also be left blank in most cases. Um, if you are part of a specific volunteer program and your coordinator has asked you to report to a certain project, then you can put that information here. Um, but if you have not heard anything about a project ID, then it's safe to just skip it and leave it blank as well. And that advice actually goes for a lot of fields in the Survey123 form. You'll notice that some fields have red stars. Um, so like your name, date, state, province, those are all required fields. All of the other fields are optional, so you can feel free to scroll past optional fields when needed. And the last field I'll fill out is my state or province. So in my case, that's New York. And this is a type ahead field, or you can select it from the drop down. And at this point, a little pop up shows up uh, telling me how to save those answers as favorites. And there is a little help box two that gives you some instructions, but I will just go through that now. So to set those answers as favorites, you go to the main menu at the top, so the three lines on the top right, and click set as favorite answers. And a very important next step is to then close out this survey and save it in drafts. 
And so you'll notice on the bottom of your screen, there is now a section for drafts. And so this draft that you've just saved is just going to stay there um, as a reference for the app for your future forms um, to paste answers from. So you don't need to go in and finish that survey. You just leave that there as a draft. And now we're at step five, where we will actually fill out a record and upload it. And again, we'll be reporting a fake species record. I encourage everyone to follow along to test out the app. So to create a new record, you tap the collect button. And now that you have some favorite answers saved, you don't have to fill out those fields again. You can go to the main menu at the top right and click paste answers from favorite. And so now we can continue forward on the form. So the first question is about how you want to record your location. And I'm going to suggest the simple option for most users. So this will allow you to drop a single point to represent your observation. The advanced option is for more complex data collection with searched area polygons um, and presence polygons within those searched area polygons. For, so for most observations, simple is going to be the quickest and easiest way to report an invasive species. So the first thing you'll be prompted to do after that is to drop the point for your observation. And so you have two options. There's the circular crosshair button on the left, where if you tap that, it'll just grab your device's GPS location automatically. You also have the option of tapping the square map icon on the right, where you can drop your location by uh, navigating on the map. So I suggest using the crosshairs button on the left. Um, it's just quicker and easier. And then it grabs my location and shows me on a map thumbnail. And at this point, we encourage you to double check that this location is the location where you are intending to report an invasive species. Um, and if not, uh, please rectify that on the map uh, before moving forward. But in most cases, you just tap that button and it's exactly where you want to be. And so you can scroll down. Um, next is this searched area attribute fields section. Um, all of these are optional, so feel free to scroll past this. And then after that, you have the option of adding presence records, not detected records, and treatments. So for, for most users, um, presence will be the most common record type to report, and you might also report not detected records. So I'll start with presence. So you, you tap the plus button. So the one required field is to select a species. This is a type ahead. So if you wanted to report spotted lanternfly, you could type in, start typing in spotted, and then it would come up. But for now, I am going to do a fake species. So I'll type in fake and it'll come up. Select that. One field that we highly recommend is adding a photo. And you'll see there is an option to add three, up to three photos for any present species. You can add a close-up photo, a general photo of the full plant or animal, and a zoomed out infestation level photo. And it's not required to, to take all three photos, but we do recommend at least one clear photo that will help us confirm your observation. And you'll see that there are two options. There's the camera button, which allows you to um, open up the camera within this app and take a photo from your with your device. And you also have the option on the right, um, the file icon, which allows you to select a photo that's already on your device. And then after that, there are some more optional fields that you can uh, fill out or scroll past as needed. So again, these are all optional. So if you're just trying to capture a quick point on the go, you can scroll past these fields. And then right underneath, you'll see this blue text where if there were more species at this location, you could click the plus button to add them here. But I'm going to move on to not detected. So if I wanted to record a species that I looked for but did not find, I could click the plus button here. And then you'll see that you would have to select the species and then you have some optional photos after that. So I'm actually not going to, to go through a not detected record at this moment. Um, so I'll just move on. 
and treatments. I won't do that right now since most uh, surveys will not include a treatment. And when I'm all done, I press the check button on the bottom right. And if there's any problem, um, like you did not fill out a required field, it will bring you right up to that and give you an error message. Um, so I can see here that I did not fill out a required field for species not detected in the entire searched area. And so I had started this not detected record, but then decided I didn't actually want to fill it out. But what happened was this created an empty not detected record and the form is expecting me to fill out the species. And so what you do here, if you, you don't want that part of the record anymore, is simply go down to the bottom of that section and click the little trash can item um, icon. So I'm going to click that little trash can. And it'll ask me if I want to get rid of the not detected record. I do, so I click delete. And you can see the not detected record is gone and it's just that plus icon again. And so now when I try to submit, it will actually work. The survey is completed. And right now, since my device is online, I have that send now option at the top. Um, but if you are out in the field without connectivity, you will need to use the save in outbox option. So I'll click that now. And this brings you back to your home screen. And you can see at the bottom, there is now a new section for your outbox. And so these are the records that you, you collect and store them on your phone while you're out in the field. At this point, it's just sitting on your device and you're the only person who can see it. So it's very important to send in these records when you get back home and have internet connection. And the way you do that is you click on this outbox button and it will bring you to your list of records and you just click send at the bottom right. Um, you can open records and make edits if you need to, but in general, they're usually ready to go. So just hit that send button on the bottom right. And this sends the records into the cloud and then they are brought into IMAP Invasives on an hourly basis. So if you want to see the records you've submitted in IMAP, you can actually log into the online interface like I showed at the beginning and look at them on the map. If you do want to do this, be sure to toggle on the unconfirmed layer to view your data in case any of your records have not been reviewed and confirmed yet. If you have any problems with any part of this tutorial, please reach out to your jurisdiction's IMAP Invasives Administrator. And before I end the tutorial, I just wanted to share a handful of general tips for using the Survey123. My number one tip is to make sure you go through this process before going out in the field and trying to record species. So I really encourage you to follow this tutorial and submit a fake species record to make sure that it's all working for you. It's much easier to figure out any issues while you're in the comfort of your home and have internet connection rather than while you're out in the field. My second tip is to use that favorites feature. It really saves a lot of time and makes the experience much easier. But please remember, after you fill out the answers you want to favorite for the first time, make sure you close the survey and save it as a draft. And once you've done that once, you'll be able to use those favorites for all of the, the records you fill out in the future. My third tip is to help save battery. So, on some devices, Survey123 can cause the, the battery to drain after using it for a while. So I encourage people to force close the app between records while you're not using the app. Um, for example, if you're hiking down a trail, you see an invasive species, open up the app, record the observation, and then close the app down. And then when you see another invasive species, maybe a half mile down the trail, then open the app again and record that species and close it out again rather than just opening the app at the start of the trail and uh, keeping it open for your entire hike, because that could end up draining battery. Number four, um, like I showed a couple of minutes ago, if you started part of a record that you don't want anymore, make sure you hit the trash icon so that you'll be able to submit your full survey. Tip number five is about the keyboard appearing on your screen. So on my Android device, I have a button underneath my my screen on the right hand side a back button where I can click it to make the keyboard go away 
Um, if you're on iOS, you need to swipe it down with your fingertip. And then my last tip is to please remember to send in your records from your outbox so that they can be seen by our conservation partners. And with that, you should be all set to get outside, report observations of invasive species on the go, and send those records from your device into IMAP Invasives, where our conservation partners across your state or province can use that information you collect to inform their management strategies. Thanks for reporting.